It's like, look, Germany, you had a couple of shots at making us all speak your language. It didn't work out, okay? Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new episode of Business Blaze. This one is the five, five of the world's weirdest banknotes. Thank you, Danny, for putting this script together. I'm gonna read it, react to it. We're both gonna learn something. Or I mean, me and all of you guys who watch, which is tens of thousands of people. Let's do it. Oh, I should also point out, I had a look through this, right? All of the banknotes actually printed out. And I thought printers were designed to like stop this from happening. This is a good one, by the way. I wanna know about why there is a woman riding a shark. Also $3 bill, <laughs> who has the $3 bill? It's bizarre enough that you Americans have a $2 bill. Anyway, let's crack on, shall we? It's uh, it's not that long. This just looks massive, but it's cause I, you know, wasted a load of ink. But like I say, at some point when this channel's huge, what I will do is I will sell these old scripts and they'll donate all the money to a charity that does like environmental or something. So if this channel's not successful, you're destroying the environment. Tell a friend. During my lifetime, Danny's lifetime, it's been difficult to get overexcited about the kind of banknotes issued here in the UK. I mean, it's often quite a thrill to have a wad of them in your hands and realize you can finally afford to pay for that weird zebra sex mask. You've been eyeing up for months, and thank you, all of the OG people who get that joke. But it's difficult to get too excited about the design of UK banknotes. I don't know. They recently all changed to plastic, which is really cool. Or at least the five and the ten. I don't think I've seen a plastic 20 yet, but I'm sure it's coming. For several decades now, we've usually had to make do with the portrait of the Queen on the front and a picture of some acclaimed historical figure on the reverse. Sadly, we never really get to see the faces of pioneering British icons that truly deserve to be on all the banknotes. There's no sign at all of Barbara Windsor, the Chuckle Brothers, or Doctor Who. I've no idea who Barbara Windsor is. Is she like a royal, because all the royal families are called Windsor? Uh, but then she'd be like, princess someone. The Chuckle Brothers, of course I know. Doctor Who, of course I know, although I've never seen it. I mean, I've seen the old ones from like back in the day, because uh, my nan actually knew one of the guys who played Doctor Who, and so she made us watch it, and it was all right. Instead, we actually used to get more reserved choices along the lines of William Shakespeare, Sir Isaac Newton, and Charles Darwin, which I'd say, Pretty good choices. <laughs> One of the most interesting controversies. Wait, William. Sh oh yeah, William Shakespeare. Like I remember Newton. Uh, I think I remember Charles Darwin for sure because he's on the recent ten pound note. Uh, William Shakespeare. He's before my time. Yeah, no, I definitely remember Newton. I think he was on the old 20, because they changed them every 10 years or so. Uh, one of the most interesting controversies in recent times concerned who was going to appear on the back of the UK's new polymer, I guess that's what they call plastic, 50 pound note with the face of former Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher cropping up on the shortlist at one point. Oh, that note's not gonna be popular in the North. <laughs> Margaret Thatcher was famous for closing down all the mines. Generally, like what I've heard people describe it as, if you lived through Margaret Thatcher, you don't like Margaret Thatcher. If you didn't, you're kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, that kind of made sense. I'm sure I'm gonna draw some massive hate. Weirdly, this wouldn't smash that dislike button. Weirdly, this wouldn't have been any kind of celebration of a highly divisive political career as the shortlist was made up of names from the field of science. Instead, it would have marked Margaret Thatcher's often overlooked work in her younger years as a research chemist when she was part of the team that invented soft scoop ice cream. Did I make a biographics about Margaret Thatcher? I don't think so, but I, I made a video about her at some point. She was only a scientist for a really short period of time. She was like a research assistant or something on this team, so she did not invent soft scoop ice cream. I can't really believe she was in consideration for her science career. It, that just sounds like bull. Thankfully, the honor went to the far more deserving mathematician and logician Alan Turing, agreed. Although it's interesting to ponder the note primarily used by master criminals and tax dodgers could potentially have featured the image of Margaret Thatcher dishing out treats from a battered old ice cream van. That would kind of be good, and I really hope she'd like have some creepy look on her face. And also, on that note about master criminals and tax dodgers, see my video about like the 50 pound note. I think it's probably the most popular video on this channel. The 50 pound note, the criminal's choice. So many people are in the comments like, uh, Simon, I use 50 pound notes all the time for my business is your business drug dealing. However, even that wouldn't have been anywhere near as weird as some of the other bizarre banknotes from around the world that actually made it off the printing press and into the wallets and purses of bizarre citizens. Yeah, women riding a shark. I'm excited! Hole in the head. In 1997, oh, actually, I came up with this idea for Danny, and this was the banknote. Uh... This was the banknote that got me all excited. In 1997, the African country of Zaire was on the brink of a new chapter as the president, Mobutu Sese Siko, had fled to Morocco after 30 years of tyrannical rule. You may have no idea who this guy is, but uh, that's a picture of him. You might recognize that picture 
because he wears weird ass hats. Particularly that one, that's his famous one. Formerly known as the Democratic Republic of the Congo, it had been Mobutu who had renamed the country Zaire in 1971, but after his corrupt regime was overthrown by rebel forces in 1997, the country reverted back to his original name under the orders of the new self-elected president, Laurent Desiree Kabila. It, so it was that the Democratic Republic of the Congo, formerly known as Zaire, formerly known as the Democratic Republic of the Congo. This name is almost as complicated as Prince's name. Zaire was dead, and in fact, the disgraced ex-president Mobutu would only last three months longer in his exile in Morocco, as he had already been suffering from prostate cancer during his final months in power. I feel like I've done a video about this guy. He was a right dickhead. Uh, so good. During his presidency, Mobutu had introduced a new currency called, imaginatively enough, the Zaire. The new government of the Democratic Republic of the Congo was naturally keen to change back to the country's original currency, the Congolese franc, as soon as possible. But this was going to take a while to implement, so in the meantime, that had to do with the old Zaire banknotes. The problem was that most of these banknotes featured the last thing anyone in their country wanted to see, a jolly image of Mobutu on the front. Yeah, it is unfortunate. It's like, yeah, this guy was overthrown, and now, you know, you Someone is torturing a dog. You guys get to see this, but like, I'll be recording videos here, like for my more professional channels where I make an effort. There'll just be like drilling going on. I mean, I'll just sit there for a while. We'll just wait for it to pass. <laughs> uh, so there he is. Oh, by the way, I'll just throw these up on the screen so you can see what's going on. Uh, so the government came up with what could best be described as a makeshift solution. They manually punched out his face in all the banknotes. <laughs> so they took them all in and they just scratched his face out. They just removed the face. You could still see his hat and his uniform and, and also it's got the old country name and stuff. It's perhaps a little baffling why they didn't just punch out the whole head. Exactly. <laughs> Instead of leaving a ghostly military cap on to, ma uh, to make it blindingly obvious that a face was missing. Although, dude, <laughs> you, uh, you've, you've got a banknote with a big old hole in it. It's gonna be obvious that something's missing. Probably a face. <laughs> Even if they stamped out his whole, like, head and stuff, you'd still be like, I wonder what was there. It's a face. It may not be a million miles away from having a crazy ex-wife who kept all the photos of a wedding in that fancy commemorative album because it cost a fortune to put together, but she cut out your face in every photograph so that she can still look back with fond memories on the special day that she married the Headless Horseman. Yeah, this makes no sense. Does this really happen in real life? I thought it was just a thing with the movies, you know, where you've got like the family portrait and then like dr dramatic scene in the movie. You fold it over and the husband's there and it's like, whoa! People don't do that, right? They just take new photos like normal person. It should also be noted that some mystery hangs over just how many banknotes were manually punched out, and whether they would still be regarded as legal tender after being quite literally, in this case, defaced. Oh, put my coffee down. Uh, I think they must be, right? Because it's like the central bank's making the decision. It's not like they're gonna be like, no, nah, none of it's legal tender because then they're giving themselves the exact problem that they're trying to avoid. In this situation, I think you could just let it go. Some commentators have pointed out that the vandalized notes would not technically have been legal, but everyone would have used them anyway because it was all they had. Exactly. Thankfully, the situation was short-lived and the Congolese franc was relaunched at the end of the year. How exciting. She's a devil woman. Oh, I know this one as well. I feel like this came up as a bonus fact in the Today I'd Have Found Out video. Back in 1954, the Bank of Canada launched a new series of banknotes to mark the coronation of Elizabeth II, because she's their queen too. Which is weird. A few suitable portrait photographs of the new queen were sourced from an official photo shoot with celebrated Canadian photographer Yusuf Karsh, which had taken place just a few years earlier. However, the Bank of Canada wasn't mad keen on the idea of the fancy tiara worn by the queen in all of those photos. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, the coins in the UK last for so long. You know, you'll pick one up and it'll say, like, 1970-something. And they all have, like, an, whenever they release, like, a new version of the coin, they have a new photo of the queen or, like, an engraving of the queen, and you can line them all up. And you can see the queen's like, you know, pretty young and then just gets older and her face gets really round and her chin just comes down to like here. <laughs> Sorry, Queenie. No offense. It's okay. We're all gonna get old. One day I'm gonna get all old and fucked up. I'm already getting there. I should exercise or something. However, the Bank of Canada wasn't mad keen on the fancy tiara worn by the queen in all those photos. That's a bit fussy, isn't it? She is the queen. She is like, she should be wearing a crown. Like, tiara's like... A light day. <laughs> they were after something a bit more informal for the Canadian banknote. But despite their best efforts, they couldn't find a good picture of the new queen wearing a baseball cap or hair rollers with a cigarette hanging loosely from her mouth. That'd be epic though. <laughs> I'd love to see her. I feel like if this channel had merch, that's exactly the sort of thing I would want. Like a picture of the queen photoshopped to be wearing a baseball cap and having a cigarette hanging out of her mouth. I feel like that represents business plays really well because it's like, you know, business, money, but ridiculous. <laughs> if someone wants to photoshop that for me, I'll pay you.
I don't know how much or how that would work. Drop me an email, simon at simonwhistler.com if you want to photo me, sh shop me something like that. We can use on some merch. And they couldn't get the queen to pose for a new photo shoot because she was far too busy with, well, whatever it is the queen is supposed to do. She was probably playing croquet or having lunch with Elton John or something like that. While she is allowed to have a social life, croquet is quite fun. I've played a few times. A friend of mine at school was really posh and he had a croquet lawn, so he'd go pro play croquet on that. It was quite a laugh. Uh, so the Bank of Canada settled for the next best thing. They professionally retouched one of the existing portraits from the earlier photo shoot to remove the tiara and replace it with more queenie style curly hair. This was long before the days of two minute fixes in Photoshop, so they called in the services of the skilled artists. Brigands Limited, formerly known as the Toronto Engraving Company, to retouch the original negative. This sort of job has just been replaced by teenagers with pirated Photoshop, right? <laughs> it was only after the new notes had been in circulation for over two years that the Canadian and American newspapers began to pick up on a minor flaw in the design. The banknotes appear to depict the face of the devil leering out from the Queen's girls just above her left ear. This is exactly what I found. Okay, so I'm looking at it right now. I'll throw it up here. I'll admit it took me a while to make out the face, but once you've seen it, you can't unsee it. For extra clarity, the devil's face has been highlighted uh, red in the color of the flames of hell. Okay, so there it is highlighted um, in red. Yeah, it's there. But I mean, we see faces in everything. If you pause this video, you'd probably find a face in my beard and you'd be like, in Illuminati confirmed or some shit. This is just bullshit. I mean, it sort of looks like a devil's face, but not really. It's definitely not intentional. Uh, this naturally sparked a small media storm. Was this a dark conspiracy? Were the Bank of Canada or the engraving company quietly trying to imply that the new queen of the Commonwealth realms was in fact an agent of the beast? Yeah, that seems likely, doesn't it? Well, not really. It was purely accidental. What a surprise. <laughs> and although it became an urban myth that the mistake was the fault of the artists at the engraving company, the devil's face actually falls outside the area they retouched. It was just a lighting issue from the original photo shoot, which caused the quirky new pattern to appear on the banknotes. New versions of the banknotes were swiftly issued, in which the queen's hair was darkened to remove any lingering trace of Beelzebub. Although curiously, the original versions were never recalled and are still in circulation today. Ina and the shark. As we've already established, most banknotes are quite dry and stuffy. This is epic. This is, I'm sorry to skip ahead, but this is amazing. I'm gonna throw, throw it up here. There is a naked woman well, topless woman. She's got a ball and she's riding a f***ing shark. Uh, as we've already established, most banknotes are quite dry and stuffy. It's very rare that you get to see a picture of anyone even cracking a smile on there. And she is smiling. Uh, so it's refreshing to see that the Cook Islands really ramped up the design. Are the Cook Islands like near New Zealand or Australia or something? I don't really know. I feel like I know people who've been to the Cook Islands, but I'm like, that could be in Africa, <laughs> South America, Australia. I really don't know. Faces of royalty? No. Prime ministers or military dictators or scientists or inventors of soft scoop ice cream? Boring. Topless women riding around on the back of a shark? That's a bit more like it. Legitimate. Although it may raise a few quizzical eyebrows on first glance, I should point out that it's a design steeped in history and legend, and was one of a series of notes which pays tribute to the Polynesian culture of the Cook Islands. It's also cool. In this case, the banknote illustrates the tale of Ina and the Shark, an ancient Polynesian myth which reveals the true origins of the hammerhead shark, although David Attenborough may not necessarily agree, or, you know, anyone who, you know, is not dumb. Uh, according to the myth, the young woman, Ina, was trying to cross the ocean to hook up with her bloke who lives on a floating island miles away from home, and I bet that's how the original story put it. Bloke. A generous shark shows up and offers her a lift on his back. So Ina gathers up some coconuts for the long journey and hops on board. As time passes, she begins to feel desperate for the loo, in a classic case of should have gone before we set off. Myths are weird. <laughs> Hoping that the shark won't notice, she relieves herself all over him. He's probably, well, they are in water, I guess. How does she breathe? But he does notice. And in fact, he gets pretty grumpy about it, threatening to abandon her in the ocean if she ever pulls a stunt like this again. One, I feel like there is a business taking ancient myths like this one and putting them like with modern language <laughs> if, he, if she ever pulls a stunt like this again. <laughs> It's like so good. Someone we could do we do, could we could redo Hansel and Gressel with completely modern slang and lingo. It would be incredible. Thankfully, none of this is conveyed on the banknote design. I don't know, it's getting pretty splashy down there. Later on, Ina fancies a bit of sweet coconut juice, but she's forgotten to bring a knife, so she simply breaks the coconut on the shark's head, creating the bump of the hammerhead shark. Ina sounds like a right bit. The shark's doing her a favor. She pisses all over him and smashes a coconut on his head. Also, 
That's not a hammerhead shark. A hammerhead shark's got the really weird head with the eyes off to the side. Like that. At this point, the shark gets proper miffed and abandons the whole ride-sharing idea, dumping this annoying young woman and her damned coconuts in the ocean. In some versions of the myth, the shark actually eats Ina before he disappears, whereas in other versions, she is ultimately rescued by Takea the Great, the king of all sharks, Ooh. who takes pity on Ina and safely escorts her to the floating island to be reuni reunited with her bloke and they live happily ever after. It's like a choose-your-own-adventure. Do you want her to get eaten? Turn to page 323. The moral of this story is probably something to do with how you should always treat your Uber driver with respect, or he might ditch you at the next roundabout. Yeah, that's true. I mean, there's that guy who got fired who was like an executive of some company. Because he goes absolutely f***ing nuts at the Uber driver. And it's like, yeah, he was really drunk, but dude, you're a bell end. <laughs> and I'm glad you got fired and hopefully you'll never be employed, employed again. And we don't just learn the origins of the hammerhead shark, we also learn why shark meat always tastes and smells like piss. I've eaten shark meat. I mean, it's not exactly good or great. But it doesn't taste bad, it tastes like, you know, dolphin. If only we could learn anything half as useful on UK or US banknotes. The 500 billion dinar, 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 no, 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 uh, note. Just a quick note. Uh, do you think uh, when I, you know, sell these for charity that this, you know, distressed image is gonna add to the value? Like someone will get this and it'll be like, ah, that's the damage from when it hit the desk. What if I like lick it? Just a quick note. On the 500 billion Yugoslav dinar banknote, which was issued by Yugoslavia in 1994, it may not be the largest ever denomination for a banknote. That dubious honor probably goes to the 100 trillion note issued by Zimbabwe in 2009, which we covered in another Business Blaze video. I'm not going to link to it below, but if you search Business Blaze banknote, it might come up. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, not that fast. It might even be there over on the right on suggested videos if my algorithm stuff is going right. Although Simon's posts these wildly out of order, it's possible that you won't get to see this until 2045. It's right, I released a video and I was like, thank you for everyone who gets that joke in a reference to it, old business place video. And everyone's like, I'm pretty sure I've seen all of these, but I don't get the joke. And it's like, oh, yeah, that video hasn't gone out yet. Ah, <laughs> uh, but this is certainly the greatest number of zeros I've ever seen squeezed across a single legitimate banknote. Ta da! Zimbabwe's 100 trillion note sensibly went with the value written in words rather than numbers. Just six years uh, earlier, the highest denomination on a Yugoslav diner was 50,000. So it's quite extraordinary. A period of economic mismanagement led to incredible hyperinflation, which sure that saw this shoot up quickly to $500 billion. That last video I just mentioned was all about hyperinflation. It's crazy. <laughs> Equally extraordinary is the fact that only two weeks after the 500 billion dinar note was issued, it had become completely and utterly worthless. The Yugoslav diner was eventually dropped altogether in 1999, kind of inevitably, <laughs> uh, just a few years before the end of Yugoslavia itself, kind of inevitable, and the forming of the short-lived, kind of inevitable, Serbia and Montenegro Union. It's then, incidentally, I've come across a whole range of websites that claim, with visual proof, the Yugoslavia also once briefly issued a five, uh, oh God, 50, zero, 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 banknote. By my reckoning, that's about 50 quintillion. Thousand, million, billion, trillion, quadrillion, quintillion. Yeah, 500 quintillion. Ah, no, 500 quintillion. I'm pretty sure. 500 quintillion, not 50 quintillion. It looks like that. I mean, it's right there. Anyone enlighten me in the comments, that would be cool. However, it's almost certainly a fake, and there's no evidence that such a banknote ever existed outside of the realms of Photoshop. Not girls, emergency money. Jesus Christ, this is long. Is it long? Yes. Not geld, emergency money. Finally, here are two examples of a different kind of banknote, not geld. During the First World War, Germany, oh, it's German. Germans, you're particularly bad with like, uh, Simon, you didn't pronounce oh, blah, 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 completely correctly. I'm very upset about this. It's like, look, Germany, you had a couple of shots at making us all speak your language. It didn't work out, okay? During the First World War, Germany entered a period of financial crisis as the non-precious metals used to produce coinage was needed for the production of war supplies, and the people of Germany began hoarding coins in panic as the country's paper money began to inflate. All this led to a massive currency shortage, so many German institutions and banks had to get creative by printing out their own Notgeld, the German term for emergency money. Notgeld wasn't exactly like usual currency. For starters, it wasn't technically legal, as it hadn't been officially authorized by the government or the central bank, the Reichsbank. However, considering the severity of the crisis and other pressing priorities at the time, the government were happy to quietly accept the production and distribution of Notgeld for the duration of the war and beyond. Wait, so everyone was just printing their own money? Like gift cards? It's kind of like gift cards. Except, you know, no one would buy Simon Whistler gift cards because you can't redeem them for anything and I'd just be like, uh, they're fake. 
but like Amazon gift cards, those are kind of like they're printing their own currency. Lockout currency usually included an expiration date on the front, and although the majority of notes were made from paper, some institutions were forced to create them from anything they could get their hands on, including wood, aluminium foil, silk, coal, <laughs> and porcelain. What? This makes no sense. It'd be like, uh, guys, I, uh, I wrote seven marks on this old tissue. <laughs> Let's call that six marks. Will you accept that? But perhaps the most fascinating element of Notgeld was the vivid artwork that featured on many of the notes produced during this troubled period, with many of the DIY designers taking time to plant satirical or political points upon their temporary currency. Here's an example of one. Uh, the first example of a 50 Fennig note looks like Notgeld currency had gone all hammer horror. At first, I thought this was a scene from Ghost Train in Skegness in the east coast of England. <laughs> Is that a real thing? I got no idea. But then I remember the German origins. <laughs> what it actually represents is open to interpretation, and by that I mean I don't really know. It's clearly meant to symbolize death in some way, and is possibly a representation of the toll of the dead during the ongoing war. That would make sense. It's pretty disturbing. But I'm not entirely sure why it features a young person sat at a desk which appears to have caught on fire. Any suggestions welcome. Indeed. Comment below. Uh, however, the second example of Notgeld, and possibly my favorite banknote of all time, is the pooping donkey. Da da! Yes, of all the things to depict on a banknote, the producers of this two zwei mark note. Uh, wait, it says two zwei mark. Doesn't that. Doesn't zwei, ein zwei. Yeah, zwei means two. The two zwei mark. So this is. Danny thinks these are called zwei marks, I guess. Let me know, Danny. I guess this is just the two mark. Decided to go with the eye. This isn't important. Why am I going on about this? I should stop criticizing Danny. Everything else is brilliant. Uh, decided to go with the idea of a defecating donkey. This is so bizarre. These emergency notes were often used to help keep businesses thriving during the currency shortage, and it could be argued that the image of a donkey conducting its own business is a sharply observed overview of the economic situation. Very true. Uh, the words written at the bottom apparently make up a little poem, although it was written in a now largely extinct local language, probably Westphalen flat German, and so it's tougher to decipher. A very rough translation would read, We people from Paderborn do not own a donkey which shits coins, but there are enough donkeys in the world that buy our paper money. Wait, are they making fun of their own money? So the note was clearly produced in the German city of Paderborn, but it's difficult to ascertain the exact point that is being made here, other than they don't need a donkey that shits coins because idiots are buying their bits of paper with images of shitting donkeys on them. Meta. I could again be missing a valuable clue here, so suggestions welcome. <laughs> like, business plays, half the answer you didn't ask for. Despite the confusing wording and surprising imagery, it's still got to go down in history as one of the most bizarre banknotes in history, and a pooping donkey is still better than Margaret Thatcher. This has been Business Plays. Smash that dislike button for uh, the German comments. Margaret Thatcher, uh, making fun of country's currencies. There's lots of things to dislike in this one, so please go ahead. Or like if you were mildly entertained and informed by this Business Blaze video. I've been Simon, scripts are written by Danny. Thank you for watching. Let's call that six marks. Will you accept that?